Hey there, I'm Anders, and let's talk some hobby. So, my favorite tabletop game is the Middle Earth strategy battle game by Games Workshop, based on the film adaptation of Tolkien's work by Peter Jackson. These films and books were a huge part of my childhood and still shape my interest to this day. As such, my favorite thing in the hobby is reproducing those armies and characters from the stories on the tabletop. However, one issue I have come across is that while the Games Workshop miniatures are excellent, they're mostly monopose. This means that each model can only be assembled in one way, if there's any assembly at all, and as someone who likes to customize my forest so that it looks unique on the table, this means I had to do a lot of conversion work. So conversions have ended up becoming just about my favorite thing to do in the hobby, and so today, I want to show you how I go about executing them. So, I'm going to go step by step through how I plan, execute, and finish my conversions. The first part of any product is an idea. In this case, what do we want the model to look like? So, to start simply, I decided to make a banner bearer for my Isengard army, and so I started by thinking up how that might look. When I'm doing this planning, I tend to spend a lot of time looking at clips from the movie, images from the movie, the art books that are an excellent resource, and also other people's models and even the Games Workshop official ones. Once I've gotten a better idea of what I want to do, I start by planning out how I want it to look. This is usually done in my head, but for the sake of the video, I decided to make some sketches to show you what I'm thinking. By sketching it out like this or going it over in your head, you can start to see exactly what does and doesn't work. For instance, in this case, I was originally going to have the one arm up. However, I realized that a lot of my other models tend to already have a similar pose, so I ended up going for a more relaxed arm hanging down by the side. Once you have an idea, it's time to start looking at bits. This can actually be a really useful step in the creative process as well, as you might get inspired by the pieces themselves rather than something else you saw and get new ideas about how to proceed. For this, I'm mainly going through spare screws I have of plastic urukai, as well as my not insignificant but not huge bit box. I'm not a big sculptor, so most of my conversions involve cutting and combining different minis, which I suppose Makes them more kitsch patches than anything, but that's just semantics, really. And once you have all the minis you want assembled, it's time to start cutting them up. It's important to do this step slowly and carefully so that one, you don't hurt yourself, and two, you don't damage the models unnecessarily so. I try to make these cuts at the most natural places possible, for instance, at joints in the arms or in the armor. This means that if I cut in the same place on two different minis, I can more or less assemble them without having to worry about filling in any gaps. While you're going through this process, it's also really important to start dry fitting things as you don't want to get halfway through the process before realizing that some of the pieces you've already cut don't actually fit together and may cause just more problems than they're worth. And then it's on to assembly. If you cut and selected your pieces properly, as I mentioned, this should be pretty easy. Depending on the type of model, this may involve pinning, super glue, or just plastic glue, but Again, this really is just like assembling any other mini at the end of the day. Once you have the model preliminarily fit together, it's time to start going around to find any holes or ugly bits and filling them with green stuff. Once again, if you did the selection part smartly, there probably isn't a ton of this left to do, but it's still worth doing, even if it's just shoving a little bit of green stuff and smoothing it out into a hole. So, speaking of green stuff, in the next step is where we start going into the sculpting. No matter how well we pick our pieces, almost inevitably there will be at least one piece that we will need to sculpt ourselves. And in this case, it is the banner. There's lots of ways of doing this, using anything from cardboard to tin foil or even paper. But I've actually been enjoying making my banners out of green stuff lately, so that's what I've chosen to do. So, I simply mix myself up some green stuff and roll it out nice and flat. I then let it sit for a while to firm up before cutting out the shapes I want and figuring out how I want to attach it to a model. In this case, I want it to be hanging over the bars we built, so I'm going to be cutting some longer slits at the top in order to roll them over. Once you have it attached, you can start to add a bit more shape to it and get it looking nice and natural by adding a few folds and bends. If it's a particularly dramatic bend in my sculpting, I'll try to leave the model on a slight angle with its bits hanging down for a day or so, so gravity will help keep it in place as it dries and hardens up. In this case, I didn't really have to do that, but it does depend on what you're working on. And at this point, you're mostly done, and you basically have your miniature. 
The next step in the process is actually one of my favorites as well, as it's the initial prime, and this is where you really see what your miniature is going to look like at the end of the day. Getting a flat, solid color on it just shows both all the things that are working and the stuff that isn't working. So this is actually a great time to go in and look for any other imperfections that may need extra sculpting or just to be redone entirely. Don't worry too much about this as if you see something that's wrong, everyone else is going to see it too. So it's worth just doing it quickly, fixing it, and then hitting with another prime job because honestly, it's not that big a deal to reprime the model. And from there, we just go ahead and paint it up like any other miniature. In this case, I'm painting it in my contrast Urukai method to match the rest of my Isengard forest, which means it was pretty fast and easy to paint up. I'm not going really anything fancy here, but I actually really like how he turns out. And that's more or less it. Honestly, it's not really all that much more complicated. And while in this case we did do something quite simple, there's nothing to stop you from using these same steps in order to make something more impressive. For instance, something like this. In this case, I built this Nazgul almost entirely out of the plastic Nazgul kit. I really didn't want to use the flying stand, so I ended up making a bigger base out of Osgiliath ruins, and then just used the normal legs from the kit, fit them in place on the new base, and pinned them before filling the gaps with green stuff. Honestly, I went through the exact same process in that I had an idea in my head through looking at concept armage and other people's miniatures, and then just executed it as I would these exact same steps. I know conversions can frequently sound really intimidating to people as it is kind of an extra step from just basic model assembly, but once you get the courage to do it, it's really incredibly rewarding. And just doing something as simple as switching an arm or a head on a miniature just adds so much more care to it and makes it your own. I love that almost every one of my armies has at least one or two conversions in it in that they make me feel like my own armies. And especially in games like this where most of the models are monopose and static models, it really makes a huge deal not to have two guys who look exactly the same staying together. And so, I really do encourage everyone to go and try just cutting up your models and sticking them back together in weird ways because honestly it's way less work than it looks like and the results, even for a simple one, are really satisfying and will make your models different. So thank you for joining us for our first video and again, my name is Anders, have a good one.